Hello and welcome to the weekly moon update for the week of September 9th through the 15th. We have a first quarter moon week this week, so hopefully you will be having more energy and feeling more motivated and inspired to move forward with your intentions. In these weekly moon update videos, you will always be able to find timestamps in the description below. So if you're not watching this when it premieres on Sunday before the week that we're talking about, then you can jump around to whatever day you're watching of the week, or you can jump to the timestamp that will take you to the Oracle messages for this week, if that's all that you're interested in. So without further ado, let's jump into the moon energy for this week. we have our first quarter quarter moon on Wednesday so that means the beginning of the week is a waxing crescent moon and the end of the week will be a waxing gibbous moon waxing means the energy and the light of the moon is increasing throughout the entire week and then we'll have our full moon next week as you can see the moon's kind of almost full there um, but we'll have our full lunar eclipse moon next week so we're technically starting off our week in scorpio energy but as you can see around um 1 p.m we will move into sagittarius it's kind of a quick transition we've got a void of course starting at 1 11 p.m and then we'll move into sag at 1 p.m so for the most part your morning we're starting off our morning with our monday morning with scorpio energy we had that over the weekend. This is watery, dreamy energy. A waxing Scorpio moon is really good for like drawing things to you. Scorpio has a very magnetic kind of energy to it. So we want to be drawing things that help us towards our, our manifestations, our intentions that we set on the new moon. So we're calling things in, bringing things in, whether that's just because we're in the Virgo moon cycle, that could be like calling things in that just help sustain you throughout the day, it, that um, help things that you want to incorporate into your daily routine, whether that's like uh, like what you're drinking in the morning when you first wake up, to meal prepping, to your, your workout routine, or, you know, just like how you want to feel. Because remember, water signs are emotional energy. So how do you want to feel starting off your week? How do you want to feel this week? Like, what are the things that you're calling in that are going to help you with your Virgo organizational skills or productivity? Then when we move into Sagittarius energy at later in the afternoon, this is fire energy. So this is really when we might start to be feeling like moving forward, um, taking action on things because fire is very inspiring. A waxing Sagittarius is like excited for that next big thing, like excited to just explore and move and, and figure things out. Um, Sagittarius is searching for the truth. So this is a quest for knowledge. You might be inspired to like learn a new workout routine or learn a new recipe or learn something that might help you with your Virgo intentions. So we'll be in Sagittarius energy all day Tuesday and for most of Wednesday as well. The moon will start to transition around 8.20 p.m. and we'll enter Capricorn at 10.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we will be starting off our Thursday with Capricorn energy. So Capricorn is our first Earth sign since the moon was in Virgo for our new moon. So like Virgo helps us like get the idea, get the organization, get the plan, 
And Capricorn is about like moving forward, taking those first steps, reaching that goal. Capricorn has its sights set on the goal. And so Thursday and Friday, like and closing out your week with hopefully some productivity because like we've got a half full moon here. We've got a wax and give us moon here. So th this is a like really nice productive energy to close out your week. Virgo season and the Virgo moon cycle is really about like, like our lives tend to be a lot different in the fall and winter seasons than they are in the spring and summer. So this is like readjusting your schedule and trying to figure out like what works and what doesn't work. So when we move into Aquarius very early Saturday morning, Aquarius helps us like we've done this first productive week. We've kind of experienced our, our new routine for it, the last couple of weeks, like what's working, what isn't working and how do we adapt to this new way of living, this new way of life, this like closing out the end of the year. So Aquarius helps us with air energy, wisdom and knowledge, like finding new ways of doing things. Using uh, the weekend, Saturday and Sunday is going to be good to kind of get you ready for like, how do you want to move into fall? How do you want to make this transition and transformation? And also start thinking about like what might be coming up for you during eclipse season. So this might be a good idea to start reading over the full moon Pisces eclipse information and maybe planning if you want to do the the lights out night. I haven't done a lights out night in a while and they're like one of my most favorite things to do. The only problem that I have with lights out nights now is that I used to like read by candlelight on a lights out night, but I, most of my books now are on Kindle. So like I have to be plugged in. So I don't know if I could maybe like set the boundary for myself to like only read on the Kindle versus, you know, sometimes we get distracted with other things when we're on a device. So if I like make that rule for myself, if that will count for lights out or not. However, like being on a device, like an iPad is isn't going to be helpful if you're trying to like reset your your biological clock or or your circadian rhythm is that what it's called the circadian rhythm like your sleep and wake cycles because minimizing those blue lights is going to be really beneficial for a lights out night and it's kind of a, a <laughs> the reason for doing it but i don't know i just really love reading so Maybe I'll just have to pick a book, like an actual physical book to read on, on this night. But anyways, we've also got our full moon eclipse tarot reading uh, that we have for all of the eclipses. So over this weekend, when we're in Aquarius, might be a good time to like start doing some of that reflection before we enter into, we'll, we'll move into Pisces later on Monday, which puts us into that full moon eclipse energy. So I kind of like the overall flow of this week, even even though we're starting off with a water sign, which I, I usually don't like starting off a week with a water energy because I'm a very emotional person and, and it does not do well with productivity. Emotions don't do well with productivity for me. So despite starting out with a water sign, we've got fire and then we've, we're coming back down to earth energy and then we've got air energy at the end of the week. So we're kind of feeling that spark and motivation with the fire. We're like setting solid foundations with the earth energy. And then we're opening ourselves up to new ideas with the air energy at the end of the week. There's something about Virgo season that makes me feel like we need grandmother, like motherly energy. And so last week we had our sacred hag card and this week we have our fairy godmother message and we've got awakening. When I pulled this card, my first thought was like, I am, or at least at the time that I'm filming it, I don't know how future Allison feels, but I am ready to wake up. I feel like I have been in, I feel like I've been sleeping beauty, like just checked out. Like I have not felt like myself. I am ready to be woken up whether that's whether that's um from true love's first kiss or not whether there's a handsome prince like <laughs> oh, waiting hopefully a handsome fairy prince or a or a bat boy prince <laughs> that's gonna whisk me off to fairyland um so anyways <laughs> your soul doth stir from deepest sleep old life fades it's not to keep Dreams are healed that once were taken, a kiss is sealed, time to awaken. New life beckons, change awaits, 
walk your path and trust the fates. So already this kind of has that energy of our transition into fall of new life beckons, change awaits, walk your path and trust the fates. Like when we're make we're going through transformations, we we kind of tread lightly because you know it's scared, it's hard, it's scary, it's hard, it's difficult to make changes and transformations. So I feel like Virgo sets us up for having the things in place that will sustain us through these transformations. And then Libra will help us kind of like readjust and balance things out once we move in, moving into Libra season next week, actually. Awaken, dear one, from your slumber. What once appealed to you does no longer. Friends are not quite on your wavelength and what once motivated you no longer does. What has happened? Why do you not feel the same? Well, my dear, let me explain. I am all ears, a fairy grandmother. Oh my gosh. You are experiencing a great shift in your personal energy. What you once found attractive is no longer appealing. This has caused you some concern because you feel you are letting other people down if you lack the same enthusiasm. Others are often scared of change, especially when a friend becomes indifferent. I'm here to assure you that what you are feeling is entirely natural. Your wishes and desires to spiritually evolve and or to live as your authentic self has brought about these changes. Living as your authentic self is a big theme for Virgo energy. As you connect with your angels and guides, Practice meditation, pray, and live your truth. Your vibrational frequency raises to match that which you now seek. Your disinterest in certain situations, behaviors, people, and material items is because they no longer match this elevated energy. You will begin to notice synchronicities such as a chance meetings with like-minded people. Um, Don't be afraid of letting anyone down or for being ridiculed for becoming who you really are. New doorways will open and what no longer serves you will fall away naturally. This is an auspicious time for you are becoming truly alive to who you came here to be. I cannot welcome this message enough. I don't think it could be any more perfect for a Virgo moon cycle slash Virgo season energy. We do have these like awakenings in fall i think i I feel like most people feel like that like we haven't of course everybody has an awakening in spring nature is is um is waking up in the spring but in fall there's like this different sense of like a refresh a reset a restart and also just just i always feel kind of like inspired and i usually feel like very connected to my magic in the fall seasons. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you feel the awakening of fall or is there like another season that you feel more awakened to? So our chakra card here is a heart chakra card. Our crystal is rose quartz and the herb is jasmine. Acceptance comes in knowing that where you are is in this moment is exactly where you need to be. Nothing to change, nothing to fix, nowhere else to be nothing else to do. Your heart chakra is the center of your energetic system. And so your heart and your love are the center of your highest consciousness. Once you center yourself in love and allow it to be the fountain that hydrates your life, you can show others how to move from their love center as well. This is a very beautiful card, but like acceptance is so important acceptance and surrender when we're making changes because we try to control things too much or maybe i don't know maybe i do virgo likes to control things too much so allowing yourself to just like accept and just be where you are in the moment no matter where that is if you're feeling very low and drained and unmotivated let yourself be and i'm talking to you future allison Uh, Because I tend to like beat myself up when I'm feeling low because I'm just like, I need to get things done. I can't just be like moping around all the time. So uh, acceptance is so important, even when we're in those low moments to just let it be. So if you are trying to wake up, (laughs) 
get some carnelian because carnelian activates the sacral chakra your energy center for creativity pleasure sensuality and passion known as the gemstone version of caffeine carnelian enhances stamina optimism and empowerment it kicks your ideas visions and dreams into high gear carnelian reminds you that you're divinely alive boosting your energy when you're feeling down so again if you are feeling down get some carnelian to make you feel motivated and empowered the affirmation is i am divinely alive i am in powered to create um i really 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 welcome this energy i'm looking forward to it i can't wait i really hope that like i really hope that we are all feeling this energy and this motivation and wanting to get moving again i've just been feeling so down and so low and it's like manifesting in like physical ways as well too so I hope that you are ready to wake up and feel motivated and inspired this week. Again, if you are feeling low and you're not feeling motivated, that's okay too. The whole point of following the moon and keeping track of your cycle and your schedule is to is so that you can work with it, not against it. If you're feeling low, let yourself be low and wait until you feel that spark and you feel that inspiration. So remember to accept yourself wherever you are and trust that you are exactly where you need to be, which is right here in Wonderland. And I'm so grateful for you for hanging out with us today. I can't wait to see you on the other side of the looking glass again sometime soon. Wake